typing text. Spreadsheets that have not been formatted can be difficult to read. Formatted text and cells can draw attention to specific parts of the spreadsheet and make the spreadsheet more visually appealing and easier to understand. In Microsoft Excel 2010, there are many tools you can use to format text and cells. In this lesson, you will learn how to change the color and style of text and cells, align text and apply special formatting to numbers and dates. Many of the commands you will use to format text can be found in the font, alignment and number groups on the ribbon. Font commands let you change the style, size and color of the text. You can also use them to add borders and fill colors to the cells. Alignment commands let you format how the text is displayed across the cells, both horizontally and vertically. Number commands let you change how selected cells display numbers and dates. To change the font. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Click the drop-down arrow next to the font command on the home tab. The font drop-down menu appears. 3. Move your mouse over the various fonts. A live preview of the font will appear in the worksheet. 4. Select the font you want to use. To change the font size. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Click the drop-down arrow next to the font size command on the home tab. The font size drop-down menu appears. 3. Move your mouse over the various font sizes. A live preview of the font size will appear in the worksheet. 4. Select the font size you want to use. You can also use the grow font and shrink font commands to change the size. To use the bold, italic and underline commands. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Click the bold, B, italic, I or underline U command on the home tab. To add a border. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Click the drop-down arrow next to the Borders command on the Home tab. The Border drop-down menu appears. 3. Select the border style you want to use. You can draw borders and change the line style and color of borders with the Draw Borders tools at the bottom of the Borders drop-down menu. To change the font color. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Click the drop-down arrow next to the font color command on the home tab. The color menu appears. 3. Move your mouse over the various font colors. A live preview of the color will appear in the worksheet. 4. Select the font color you want to use. Your color choices are not limited to the drop-down menu that appears. Select more colors at the bottom of the menu to access additional color options. To add a fill color. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Click the drop-down arrow next to the Fill Color command on the Home tab. The color menu appears. 3. Move your cursor over the various fill colors. A live preview of the color will appear in the worksheet. 4. Select the fill color you want to use. To change horizontal text alignment. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Select one of the three horizontal alignment commands on the Home tab. Align text left. Aligns text to the left of the cell. Center. Aligns text to the center of the cell. Align text right. Aligns text to the right of the cell. To change vertical text alignment. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Select one of the three vertical alignment commands on the Home tab. Top align. Aligns text to the top of the cell. Middle align. Aligns text to the middle of the cell. Bottom align. Aligns text to the bottom of the cell. By default, numbers align to the bottom right of the cells and virtual letters align to the bottom left of the cells. Cutting numbers and dates. One of the most useful features of Microsoft Excel 2010 is its ability to format numbers and dates in a variety of ways. For example, you might need to format numbers with decimal places, currency symbols like dollar, percent symbol, percentage, etc. 
to format numbers and dates. 1. Select the cells you want to modify. 2. Click the drop down arrow next to the number format command on the home tab. 3. Select the number format you want. For some number formats, you can then use the increase decimal and decrease decimal commands below the number format command to change the number of decimal places that are displayed. Click the buttons in the interactive below to learn about the different number formats. Saving. Whenever you create a new workbook in Microsoft Excel 2010, you'll need to know how to save it in order to access and edit it later. Microsoft Excel 2010 allows you to save your documents in a number of ways. There are many ways you share and receive workbooks, which will affect how you need to save the file. In this lesson, you will learn how to use the Save and Save As commands, how to save as Microsoft Excel 2010, 97, 2003 compatible workbook and how to save as a PDF. To use the Save As command, Save As allows you to choose a name and location for your workbook. Use it if you're saving a workbook for the first time or if you want to save a different version of a workbook while keeping the original. 1. Click the File tab. 2. Select Save As. 3. The Save As dialog box will appear. Select the location where you wish to save the workbook. 4. Enter a name for the workbook and click Save. If you're using Windows 7, you will most likely want to save files to your documents library. For other versions of Windows, you will most likely want to save files to the My Documents folder. To use the Save command. 1. Click the Save command on the Quick Access toolbar. Two. The workbook will be saved in its current location with the same file name. If you're saving for the first time and select Save, the Save As dialog box will appear. Use Auto Recover. Microsoft Excel 2010 automatically saves your workbooks to a temporary folder while you're working on them. If you forget to save your changes or if Microsoft Excel 2010 crashes, you can recover the auto-saved file. 1. Open a workbook that was previously closed without saving. 2. In Backstage View, click Info. 3. If there are auto-saved versions of your workbook, they will appear under Versions. Click on the file to open it. 4. A yellow caution note will appear on the ribbon of the workbook. To restore this version of the workbook, click Restore and then click OK. By default, Microsoft Excel 2010 auto saves every 10 minutes. If you're editing a workbook for less than 10 minutes, Microsoft Excel 2010 may not create an auto saved version. If you do not see the file that you're looking for, or if you're looking for an auto saved version of a file, that has no previously saved versions, you can browse all auto-saved files by clicking on the Manage Versions button and selecting Recover Unsaved Workbooks from the drop-down menu. 
with a Microsoft Excel 97-2003 workbook. You can share your workbooks with anyone using Microsoft Excel 2010 or 2007, since they use the same file format. However, earlier versions of a Microsoft Excel 2010 use a different file format, so if you want to share your workbook with someone, Using an earlier version of Microsoft Excel 2010, you will need to save it as Microsoft Excel 97 to 2003 Workbook. 1. Click the File tab. 2. Select Save As. 3. In the Save As Type drop-down menu, select Microsoft Excel 97-2003 Workbook. 4. Select the location you wish to save the file. 5. Enter a name for the file and click Save. To save as a PDF. Saving your workbook as an Adobe Acrobat document, which is called a PDF file, can be especially useful when your recipients do not have Microsoft Excel 2010. A PDF file will make it possible for recipients to view the content from your workbook, but they will not be able to edit anything. 1. Click the File tab. 2. Select Save As. 3. In the Save As Type drop-down menu, select PDF. 4. Select the location you wish to save the file. 5. Enter a name for the file and click Save. Microsoft Excel 2010 defaults to saving the active worksheet only. If you have multiple worksheets and want to save all of them in the same PDF file, click on Options. The Options dialog box will appear. Select Entire workbook from the options dialog box and click OK.